Welcome back to Godspeed ZRZ. Now on a nasty and rainy day like today, what's better to kill some time than looking for some Jeep parts? Now throughout my ownership experience owning many Jeeps in the past, I've bought so many different Amazon and eBay parts. So today I'm gonna show you guys some of my favorite parts and pieces I've bought from Amazon for my Jeeps in the past. And sure enough, I've got every single one on my Rubicon 392 I own right now. So just going front to back on this thing, the first thing you're gonna notice are the hood latches. Now for these, I've actually done an install video in the past. It went over really well. A lot of people liked it and actually ordered them themselves. It's an aluminum powder coated construction and it does have the hood pin here that you have to pull out to release, which is a pretty neat design. Now believe it or not, this actually eliminates the hood flutter that you get in many of the JKs, many of the JLs, and it's a very annoying thing, but with these, it's tightened down much more securely. It looks a lot more aggressive than the standard plastic hood latches, and it actually brings up quite a few questions from people that see the Jeep. For the hood latches themselves, I believe they were only somewhere around $80, maybe $50. Extremely cheap for what they are. Not only do they give you a little bit more functionality, but a lot better styling as well. Now continuing with the front here, if you guys follow the channel, you'll actually remember these last fit lights that I picked up. Now on these, they are an aluminum construction powder coated as well. And they match very well with the actual powder coating from the factory on the Jeep. Now with these, these are the flood beams. With these last fit pods, they work extremely well. They wire up very easy. I actually wire them into my factory switches. There's been no moisture to get inside. I've been running these for about a year in some pretty crazy conditions. They've done very, very well. I have had a couple rocks bounce up and hit them, but I have no rock scratches or anything like that. The powder coating itself has stayed intact 100%, so I've had no issues at all, and the brightness is absolutely unreal. Now, of course, these are a very competitive price as well. I've got the link down in the description for everything I'm gonna go over today. So if you guys are interested in any of this stuff, just go down to the description, hit the link, and it will be able to show you the actual cost of what it is right now. Another thing on this Jeep I get a lot of questions about is something as simple as this super shorty antenna. Now, for this antenna itself, I actually picked this one up at O'Reilly's, but you can tell here it cut down the height quite a bit. The standard antenna goes all the way up here. It hits everything in the trails and you have to take it off whenever you're going into car washes. Not only does it just clean up the look, but it functions very well. Now, obviously it just doesn't bring much attention. It's one of those parts that you're trying to get attention away from whatever part you're replacing. So for that specific purpose, this thing works great. Now on Amazon, there are so many different options for this similar size. Now this one is only a six inch antenna, so it's extremely short. They have variations up to 12 inches, 24 inches, so many different variations but to get rid of that standard antenna this thing is a great great option now moving on to the interior one of the really cool things i did pick up and add is just the simple gun magnet now with this one itself it makes it really easy you can either use 3m tape or you can actually screw it in and for this one i've just got the 3m tape on and it's holding up great it's actually holding my glock 19 right now now traditionally in this jeep and every jl i've had before i usually just put a pocket holster over top to protect it and put it in between my emergency brake and the actual console itself it works well it's just not as convenient as having it mounted somewhere very securely and that's not going anywhere of course with this one as well it's got the slide action so you can actually chamber around and dismount it that way you're ready to go whenever you need to pull it out so it's a really nice feature and it actually cleans it up quite a bit more than just having a gun sitting right there now moving on to the back if you guys watched my most previous video i've got this new floor mat cargo mat in the back and it's working amazingly well so far it's actually got the cutouts for the tie down points as well which is really nice i haven't seen many others with that feature so far with this mat it's a very rugged design but it's also made to fit under the subwoofer if you have the factory alpine sound system you're going to be limited on the floor mats that you can get also if you do have the 4xe version of the wrangler then it is set up a little bit different on this side over here so this company actually makes a mat to fit all the different variations they work very well they're very rugged and they actually just look really good. I love having that texture on top looking like a tread pattern. And speaking of that, 
I've actually got laser cut floor mats up front and these are the last fit brand. Now you can see the tread pattern in these is extremely aggressive as well. You can tell I definitely need these in this Rubicon 392 because of how dirty I get them. And with these, they're so easy to clean. They fit in perfectly. It's just as good of a fit as the OEM Mopar all weather mats. It's just a little bit different design to liven up the interior quite a bit more. And of course they also make rear mats and you can see here it's all one piece just like the OEM style all weather mat. And for this it holds everything in very well. I really don't have many back passengers that often, but when I do, I love having this in the back, and I just love having something a little bit different than everybody else. Another great thing I added here recently was actually these grab handles. I installed them in a previous video, and I actually got quite a few questions, so I'll go ahead and answer those right now. Now you can tell on the inside, this is what they look like installed, and it was a very, very simple install. You just need two bolts to actually install them. I had a lot of questions if my hand would actually fit in and use them while the top was on. And just to show you how much room you have, yes, your hand will definitely fit, and you can hold these while your top's actually on. There's plenty of room on the inside. They've actually even got these hooks to hold whatever you need. They make them for the rear as well, but I just got the front set for this one, and it's a very, very solid construction. Once again, it's an aluminum material, and it is powder coated as well. It's a very rugged tactical design, and with the rubber grip, it is awesome. It's very, very sturdy. It gives your passengers a great place to hold on to as well, but whenever you do have the doors off and stuff like that, it's nice to at least be able to have something to hold on to. I've just thrown in a bonus here. Of course, I've already made a video on the Oracle tail lights for the rear. These are the flush mount, and you can tell it's quite a bit different styling than what you get with the factory JL or even JT tail lights. So for these, they were pretty simple and straightforward to install. They've got an extremely bright reverse light, and it's almost like you've got the light bars in these right there. One thing I will say is this piece right here is a piece that you would have to take out to expose the blind spot monitor system and then it would be white. So for me, I decided just to keep it covered up, turn off my blind spot monitors, and I just couldn't sacrifice the styling to have this white blind spot monitor exposed right there. So just something to keep in mind. Now, all the features on this thing that I'm talking about today, I have tested out for quite a bit of time, so I feel confident enough to recommend these products to you. A lot of them are extremely, extremely cheap for what they are for the benefits that you get, whether it be for the functionality or the actual styling. A lot of times you can go on Amazon and find anything you're absolutely looking for, but you'll also find a bunch of smaller sellers that buy a bunch of these parts at wholesale pricing and sell them in mass quantity. That way they can give you the best price as well. So it's a really great thing to take advantage of. And as long as you're getting the right parts, you know that they've been tested out, they're gonna work well. It's a great thing to look into. So hopefully this gives you guys a great idea of some of the parts and pieces that I've thrown onto this Rubicon 392 and also maybe give you some encouragement and at least point you in the right direction for some of these parts. Now, like I said, I did link all of these parts that I'm talking about in the description below. So if you wanna go check them out, see what the real time price is today. A lot of these have great reviews as well. So that's something to always look out for whenever you are buying something off of Amazon. Now, if any of you guys have any parts recommendations or accessory recommendations, anything like that, drop it down in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you wanna see next. If you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, but until next time, Godspeed.